Page nine, taking it easy. Now we're going to swing the eighth notes on this and they're telling us, and this is kind of a nice don't get in a hurry thing. This is just kind of a laid back, yeah, Sunday afternoon thing. The notes at the beginning, the chords, hopefully figure them out. If you have to, you spell out the chord. Remember, that is one note at a time starting at the bottom. But the first chord is a G, an A, a C, and an E. The next one is A, C, D, E, F. This is in C major, so we don't have to worry about the sharps and flats until they put them in. So you just figure out these chords. Measure four, look at this. First chord, B, D, E, G. Now you're going to flat them all, so if you look at the keyboard, you're just gonna, everything goes down a half a step, which means all black notes, and then down another half step. That's really all they're doing. So it's here, and same figuring on all of them. And then here. I'll get down to measure nine. Their fingering they're suggesting is a two, one, I think an easier fingering is simply to start with a one and to do one, two, three, four, five type. Here, same thing on measure ten. I would start it with a one and do one, two, three, four. And measure eleven, same thing. I'd start it with a thumb. Experiment with both and see what you think. A measure fifteen, you got the little grace note at the end. Hopefully that's not a problem. Just real quick. Now, measure 18. We're here with this here, and then a fourth finger, and then the little finger comes under. This is the fingering I suggested on a previous video, and that's a staccato. So that's what we want to hear is the top note. To get to where the top note is solid and secure. Now measure 19, look at this. Now if your fingers are wide and you're having trouble getting the key out extra stuff, you don't want to be playing a, a thumb on a black note in a lot of cases. And here you don't have to it, because when you're coming down, well let's just do it through that measure here. You're starting out, then a two, three, five, and then a four, two, three, here, instead of the thumb, you can reach the, little, the index finger down. And you don't have to use the thumb on a black note if you want. It's up to you. Now, measure 22 is that grace note again. Now, the first grace note is a G sharp. Well, the second one is too. That sharp is good for all G's, the rest of that measure, wherever they are. Watch the fingering in measure 23. I recommend the last note measure 23 that you put a 2 on that rather than a, because that puts you in position for, for the next measure. So it's on the triplets, it's 3. And just on the last one, just use a 2. Now, on measure 25, you're coming down on the triplets. Now the last one is a, you could do a three, one, three, three, two, three, but you need three in the next measure. You see that? So I recommend the last note on measure 25, you use the fourth finger. So you, you're ready for the third finger in the next measure. So it's... This is what I recommend. Now take a look at this ugliness going on on measure 27 here. We're here. It's an A flat, B flat, D, and then you go, everything goes down a half a step. It's a, it's a staccato. Uh, you're going to get used to this business of these chords going up and down a half step. It happens a lot, and you'll get the hang of it. I know you will. On mm -hmm. uh, measure 35, you have here. And I recommend again that you, it's a, a five-fifth finger on the D. So 
So, so it's a 1-5, it's a staccato, and then the last chord is a G natural, A, C sharp, because it has a natural sign in front of the G. So it's, and again, it's the top note we want. And then you have this ugliness in the next measure again. Two, three, and you can reach down and use a two on the D sharp if you don't want to use a thumb. Measure 38. You hear? Let me come down to here. And the next one, it's an A flat, because we're not all going down a half a step here, just some of them. It's an A flat, C, D flat, F. Oh, that's just lovely. So the measure is here. And then here. Isn't that nice? Left hand. Now if I play, now again this is swinging it. So rather than one and two and three and it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. kicker. Measure five. You have this stretch of a tenth. Your hands are big enough, it's not a problem. If your hands are not big enough, you got to move your hand a little bit. And they have that alternate fingering in parentheses, so it's up to you whether you can move your hand enough. So you, you, you can go here. You know, the pedal's going to help you connect it all together. Use five and one on the other. You have to look down at the keyboard quite a bit until you get the hang of it. Hopefully, eventually, you can do it without looking, but this is a little trickier. Now, if you can, once you play the first note and you come up to the next one, maybe you can play it three and five. You, you just don't have to ha keep down here. You can hear. So you're moving a little bit, not as much as with five and one. That's quite a bit. Here. So experiment and see if you can do that. You can still use three and one. You're just moving your hand a little bit. You're not connecting them. The pedal will connect them for you in this case. Measure eight. It's okay. The right hand's got to go down. They have that RH there. It's right here. Watch the accidentals, you'll be fine. On measure nine, I'd like to look at that. The first beat they're saying is with the right hand there. And then the right hand has to go up. Well, it doesn't have to be with the right hand. If your hand is big enough to reach a tenth, an octave of, or an interval of a tenth, then you can play the first beat in measure nine with the left hand. It gives your right hand a little bit more time to get up where it's got to go. So to play measures eight and nine, you're here. Here. It takes a little bit of practice, but the point is sometimes you'll play a note where they're suggesting in one hand you'll do it with the other hand to give your other hand a chance to do something else. That doesn't make any sense at all, I know. But this happens in a couple other places, and I will probably do that when we do the play with me. It's, it's, I just have a habit of doing that. Because I can reach. If you can't reach it, you have no choice. You have to use the right hand. Just, if you're going to do that, I suggest you play that A with the thumb. On, on measure nine, the first beat there. So you don't have to go as quite as far. You work it out. You work out that hand motion. Whatever works for you works for me, I guess. Measure 18 in the left hand. It's here. The staccato. I recommend a 2 on the 8th note after the octaves. Two one. You can use thumb on all of them if you want, but I, I, 
I, I prefer a 2-1. The same thing, I measure 35. It's here. I prefer a 2-1 on those last two A's. There. And then at the bottom, the last two measures. That you got those ugly looking three bars connecting those half notes together. That means tremolo. And a tremolo is this. So you're going to go here. Now, different kinds of tremolos. I still say do them rhythmically. So it's how fast can you do that? If you can do 16th notes, one end it. You can go faster than that, that's fine. But as you're doing this, I still say rhythmically. Some people will just say, just shake it, don't worry about it. Now keep in mind the dynamics you're going to have to die away to that last chord is really soft. It's very soft. So all you're doing this, you're, you're getting slower and you're getting softer at the end. The last three measures are here. And that rolled chord, those six notes, I would do those very slowly and you can continue to retard as you're doing them. And then let them ring out and the hands and the pedal come up at the same time and I recommend you don't do it abruptly just stop the sound like that lift the pedal very slowly you lift the fingers up but keep them on the keys and then you lift the pedal up very slowly so the sound dies away I don't know if that works on an electronic piano but on acoustics you're here here and at the end I'm just going to lift that fingers up and then I'm going to lift the pedal up very slowly and the sound is just going to die away. To me that's much more effective than just stopping the sound. Speaking of pedal, let's talk about it. They have you pretty much legato pedal in most things except maybe a few staccato notes. Uh, to me that is really mushy. So at the beginning, so you're going to push the pedal down right after you play. I'm using a, a legato pedaling or an overlap pedaling here. So I push the note and then the pedal. When I change the pedal, I push the note first and then I up the pedal and down it. And then here, I would like to hear a break before I go on. I don't want to connect this with this. I want to hear a little silence before this before that. So on the chord, and then I'm going to lift the pedal with the hands. One minor change to the pedaling style you can think about. I consider, let's look at starting on measure five. Look at the right hand here. With the pedaling, it's going to sound like this. That sounds okay to you? Go for it. I think it sounds a little blurry. I'd like to take out some of it, at least. So I'm going to recommend that we try and pedal maybe the fourth, the, the second and fourth beats here. So it's... To experiment with it. The left hand will help so it's here. Pretty much pedaling with the uh, second and fourth beats in the left hand. It's a little less blurry, but it's more complicated pedaling. So it's something that you can think about and work on. I, when I play with me, I'm liable to do either one, so I can't tell you which way I'm going to go. It'll be interesting to find out one. Actually, as far as the pedal goes, I think the rest of it you can play pretty much as it is. I don't really have any suggestions. 
I'm all for one for experimenting with the pedal to see if any other breaks in the sound are appropriate. If you like them or not, adjust the pedal accordingly. But uh, otherwise, I would suggest go ahead and play it as it's shown. So let's try this together very slowly. We're going to do page 9, then we're going to stop, and then we're going to do pages 10 and 11. Of course, if you're playing, performing for somebody, you can't do that. But here, at the bottom of page 9, you have a whole note. You could play that like a quarter note, and then as your left hand is doing this, turn the page with the right hand right quick. So that helps a little. And this piece just plays straight through. There's no repeats or anything, so that ought to work for you, I think. So I'm going to give us four counts. Let's try this very slowly together. I do mean very slowly. <laughs> left hand is here. Right hand's here. The foot's on the pedal. Here we go. One, two, and ready, and go, and... Hands here, foot ready. One and two and ready and go and. goes you decide what un unhurried and lazy is I have no idea